news of the daytime and of course what everybody's talking about coming out of last night's games is uh, the Zach Cassian incident incident against Tampa now last night and flipping back and forth between channels I didn't see it when it happened uh, I certainly heard about it last night though and in seeing it it's just so reckless so he kicks at Chernak and of course there are those who immediately go to the Chara thing. Look, Chara's cross-check to the face or to the neck on Gallagher. Should that have been a penalty? Absolutely. Yes. Suspension. A game, maybe two. Because again, those cross-checks, like the, you see them all the time. Kicks to the chest, not so often. So uh, Ray Ferraro's already tweeted out today. He thinks 8 to 10. It's got to be an 8 to 10 game suspension. Uh, of course, right away, people last night as well, uh, right away talking about, oh, that's the code, right? This is Cassian and the code. This is something we've talked about with Zach Cassian. I remember in Vancouver, he has a really short temper. He has a short fuse. He has a really pretty hair trigger when it comes to his temper. And that's what this is. This is what that hair trigger uh, can do. And so I'm, I'm glad Chernak's okay. They asked Chernak about it after the game. He knew exactly what had happened. I uh, apparently asked him what was wrong with him, and he wouldn't answer. Uh, so when I see people saying, oh, he didn't even care. He didn't care. Well, it's during the play, so he's not going to stand around and have a conversation with him during the play, but he definitely cared. And he did ask Cassian what was wrong with him. Uh, the officials on the play, I'm, I'm not sure what's wrong with them. That that has to be a penalty, right? Uh, using your skate as a weapon is, is, is bad. And we've seen before uh, kicks and how they've been handled. I don't know. And again, it comes down to what's the ferocity of the kick and how much did it connect. And it's like, okay, well, he didn't kill the guy. So, like, I, I, I don't know. I think that because it's an in-person hearing. Now, he's waived the right to the in-person hearing. So, it's going to be over the phone uh, at 1 o'clock Pacific, 4 o'clock Eastern. Uh, I think it's going to be lengthy. I think we're looking at a, I, I think, 8 to 10, which uh, is the number thrown out there by Ferraro. I think that sounds about right. Uh and, and we'll see how things go. Uh, so for the Oilers, you know, if, if they're down Cassian, that's going to really hurt them uh, for what Cassian provides, which is more than this. And again, this is one of those things where Cassian's had a pretty good year. Now it's going to be completely overshadowed by this incident. The whole Kachuk thing, that was more just for that feud between Kachuk and Cassian and, and didn't speak to the whole season. This definitely will... Be something that follows him. Incidents like this tend to follow players. So uh, we'll see how long he's out for. And I know that the comment section's likely going to have people. Because I've, I've seen it on Twitter. I've seen it online. What about Chara? What about Chara? What about... Uh -huh. They never punish the Bruins. Except Lauzon. But that's... Okay. This is why I don't talk a whole lot about the controversial hits during the games. Because there, there are... Those who will say, well, Shannon feels that way because he's a Bruins fan or, oh, he's a Canucks fan, so he has this opinion about this, even though when I have felt that it's warranted, there was a slew foot a couple seasons back by Marshawn that I thought should have been suspended that they didn't even call him about. So I have called them out. I have. This is an incident involving Cassian, who's been a nice reclamation project for the Oilers, and now that's kind of gone off the rails a little bit. So we'll see what the NHL does with that today. Let me know how many you think he's going to get in the comment section below. Uh, and let's move along. Knee surgery for Andreas Janssen. He's out for the next eight weeks minimum. At least eight weeks for the Toronto Maple Leafs. That is a uh, major blow to a team that was already suffering through its share of injuries. And it's not that the Leafs have had a ton of them. It's just where they are and who it is it tends to be kind of important uh and there's also talk that jake muzzin may have an extension coming in with toronto apparently now that would that would be a kick in the teeth for people who can't wait for toronto's blue line not to exist next year and ha 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 the, the cap got them so if muzzin signs a team friendly extension uh, that would do a ton to keep their defense at least passable next year uh they they will lose tyson berry i think they know it i think he knows it but if they can keep Muzzin, he is their best defensive defenseman. And then look to build from there. And, you know, if the cap's supposed to go up next summer anyways. So as long as the cap does go up as planned, Toronto will have some money. Not a lot. Uh, they won't be able to make huge moves. But 
in between now and then, there's a lot they're going to be able to do. Uh, so, round to Jay Bomeister. So, Jay Bomeister, and I looked this up and I did some research. So, he got an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. It's a fancy way of saying it's kind of like a pacemaker, but it goes on your chest. And it sends out a shock when the heart's out of rhythm. So, if your heart's not beating properly, so if it's beating out of rhythm, it'll send an electrical signal to fix it. And if it's beating too fast, it will shock the heart back into a regular rhythm. Now, it's recommended for patients with ventricular arrhythmia. And a lot of people said it could be an arrhythmia that caused him to drop the other night against uh, Anaheim uh, when he was on the bench. Uh, it's also recommended for people who've had heart attacks, sudden cardiac arrest, uh, congenital heart disease, or other conditions that, that can lead to sudden cardiac arrest. So... It, it doesn't tell us 100% what's going on with them. But I also looked into it, and I, I actually went through, there's a, there's an online article of living with an ICD. Now, he's not supposed to even drive for the first week. And you can't drive commercially if you have an ICD. So that's an interesting thing, that there are certain rules that you have when you have an ICD. And when it comes to actual physical sports, you should go see your doctor and go through a plan with that. Because if you if you get hit in the chest... It can dislodge it. So this is where things get tricky. Professional hockey player, even with pads and protection, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where even if he could come back and play, I don't know that the Blues, the NHL, would necessarily want him to be taking this risk. This does mean that they've likely found something or they've said, you know what, the risk of, of this happening again is too high and we need to make sure that you're protected. The good news for him is that these seem to work very well. They work 24 hours a day, of course. And they are, you know, cutting edge technology. And, and so he's he's being taken care of. Uh, the plan is right now he's still in the hospital. They're going to discharge him likely soon and fly him home to St. Louis. The earliest, let's just say, well, what if he tries to make a comeback? From what I was reading, the earliest he could even think about it would be two and a half months from now. So just from what I was reading, and again, not a doctor or anything like that, but it's always interesting to me to look at. When I see a headline and they go, oh, this has happened, I go, well, what does that mean? So I always try to do the, the research into why and, and what that means. So it does mean that, you know, it, it's a protective thing to, to keep him from having this happen again, but it does mean that if we're looking at where his career is at, it is very likely done. And so the other thing that's mentioned in the article where they talk about living with it, it is, it is very, very common for people who get an ICD to feel depression after and to feel anxiety. Cause, and, and that's understood because for him as a pro athlete, it would be very, very tough because he, he's never missed a game. He played over 1,200 games, likely was planning on retiring after this season anyways. But now he's got this reminder that, that this has happened and uh, that's going to be tough. So all the best wishes to him as always uh, and any kind of updates that we see over the next week or so uh, I will be willing to share. And of course, they're supposed to update us next week on his condition, but be very surprised if he makes any sort of a comeback. It's just, you know, get yourself healthy. What's important in life isn't the hockey part. It's the after hockey part. Uh, Zach Bogosian. Buffalo Sabres is on waivers. There's no way to transition from one to the next. So I'm just going to just say Bogosian's on waivers for Buffalo, uh, which means that Jason botterell has been trying to trade him and either it's just not worth it or there just hasn't been the interest. So I don't know if they're planning on sending him to the minors or if this is just we're going to waive him and see what happens. Think like Toby Reader with Calgary earlier this year where they waived him and never did send him to the American League. But, uh, yeah, for Zach Bogosian, it's been a tough year. He does apparently want out of Buffalo. This is his chance. And yet, I don't know that anybody picks him up at that cap hit right now. Uh, for Tampa Bay fans, uh, the good news for them, of course, is that it's nine straight wins. And they look fantastic. And, again, this does feel different than last year. And I know that they're threatening to be number one in the NHL again, which may terrify their fan base. But it feels different than last year. This doesn't feel like what we went through last season when they just cruised to 62 wins. They had their share of setbacks early in the year. They went through a lot of uh, adversity. And now they're they're definitely playing better. So we'll see if the playoffs tell a different story than last year. 
But uh, yeah, so there are nine straight wins right now. How far can they go? Who knows? Uh, Borvietsky suffered a an ankle injury last night for Ottawa. This, of course, is, is a, a crushing injury for him, uh, depending on, again, there hasn't been an update on how long he's going to be out. They're supposed to update us either today or soon on when he's going to be out or how long he's going to be out. But he was a trade piece going into the deadline or at the very least somebody that um, Pierre Dorian may have been discussing an extension with as well. Uh, and that hurts. He's had a very good season. He's been productive. And I think that's been with the UFA market in mind of either I'm going to get paid by Ottawa, they're going to pay me really well, or I'm going to become a UFA and I'm going to make some good money. So uh, his stats have been very good. And as long as he comes back from his ankle injury quickly, he should be okay. But if it's if it's an extended injury, that would likely affect how much money he makes come July 1st. So yeah, hopefully Borokop comes back quickly. He is a superhero, and superheroes do have regenerative powers. So I expect him to be out half the amount of time that they tell us. Uh, I wanted to end on this note as well. Uh, Mark Jankowski, who had a, a miserable season going for Calgary, he now has five goals in their last seven games. So... He did have 17 goals a couple of seasons ago. Uh, last year was a downbeat for him. And now, this year, it looked like a complete write-off over the last couple of weeks. He has salvaged the season. We'll see whether or not he can help lead the Flames uh, to greater heights, um, say playoffs, and winning the first round. That kind of, just that kind of simple aspiration. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, so Jankowski, five goals in seven games, I thought warranted being thrown in here. And, of course, this afternoon when we hear how long Cassian's going to be suspended for, I'll do a video on it then and we can have a debate about too long, too short, right amount of time. Again, I don't envy Department of Player Safety because I would imagine they get constantly bugged with, hey, when are you going to do something about this? Hey, what about, hey, hey, hey. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. I might as well throw a shout out out there to... Ola Albertson, Scoop, and Seth Douglas for your support on Patreon and in helping to uh, support the channel and provide the kind of videos we get to watch every day. Well, you guys get to watch every day. I get to produce every day. I don't sit and watch my own videos. That'd be weird. I get asked that too. Do you watch your own videos? No, I don't watch my own videos. Why would I do that? That's just strange. All right. So thank you for your support and thank you to everybody watching this. Uh, it's it's been a really really great season and i'm looking forward to the playoffs which are in about seven weeks time so we're getting close thank you guys again i will talk to you very soon